your questions about COVID-19. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Sure. First, a uh, big story breaking yesterday is this new drug, well, not a new drug, but an antiviral drug, Remdesivir, having great effect in a University of Chicago study. Uh, is that something we might see that would really have an impact real soon? Well, we hope. There's actually a number of antiviral drugs that are going, undergoing clinical trials. Um, both Northwestern and University of Chicago are two of the major testing areas. And what the experts are saying is this is all very encouraging, of course. That's what we're looking for is something that's going to work. But it's probably not going to end up being just one drug. You know, it's going to be either a cocktail or maybe one thing will work better in one patient and another thing in someone else, which is why it's so important that there are multiple clinical trials going on. But sure, this is great news. I would imagine we can't get into this phase one, two, and three of opening until we have contact tracing, and people have heard that phrase. What does that involve? Is that somebody at the hospital picking up the phone and calling uh, the, the 50 people that you've come in contact with? That sounds very labor-intensive. <laughs> it's labor impossible is what it is. My understanding is that um, that it's really tracing people even by cell phone use and things like that. We know that uh, Mayor Lightfoot has, has talked a little bit about that. But at the end of the day, um, what it really comes down to is testing people who are asymptomatic. And and we know, we know that that's not going to routinely be, you know, that's not going to happen. We just don't have the tests. It's not practical. But but one thing that's interesting is, is there is one group that is having universal testing, and that's pregnant women. Because you need to know if the pregnant women are positive to determine if they require isolation, if they have to um, labor in the COVID unit. And there was a study that came out of New York just this week that looked out of two hospitals and they tested every single pregnant woman who was asymptomatic just to see how often you can find um, people that are positive in the asymptomatic population. And what they found is that one out of eight, one out of eight of them tested positive. And while a few went on to develop symptoms, 87% of them were completely asymptomatic, which is huge. Now, granted, this population may not be representative of the world. Number one, New York is a hot spot. Number two, pregnant women tend to be really, really careful about social distancing because they are so worried. But still, the idea that the overwhelming majority of the positive people never, ever had symptoms that's the challenge. Okay. Before we get to questions, uh, there's reports out of India that a coronavirus strain has been detected that is a mutation. And if we had a vaccine, it would have no effect then, right? Well, look, I saw that report. So before everybody gets, you know, crazed about that report, it wasn't, it was not validated by any scientific evidence. It was one of these anecdotal type things. It mm. hasn't been published. But keep in mind, keep in mind that all viruses mutate. That's why we get a new flu vaccine every year. They don't use the same one again and again. And once you get the basic vaccine, it can be adapted for different strains, different mutations. So, so to say that it's worthless is, is really overstating it, even if that were the case. They okay. know. This is not news that there's some different mutations. Okay, let's get to uh, quickly some viewer questions. Someone in my uh, northwest suburb posted she is grooming pets at her home. Is this wise? Well, the first animal in the United States that tested positive for COVID was a tiger a zoo in New York. So she should definitely not be grooming tigers, which I never would have even thought about mentioning until Tiger King. But anyway, um, assuming she's grooming dogs, there's actually not a whole lot of information. We know. We know that it's rare for other coronaviruses like SARS or MERS to infect animals and spread to human. But again, this is a new virus. Not a lot that's known. And since this virus was believed to be initiated in the live animal market, there is some concern. So this is what the CDC says. The right. CDC states that in the absence of data, pets should be treated like humans. So unless the dogs are wearing masks, washing their paws, and practicing social distancing, there's no guarantee that these pets are going to be safe from the virus. So it may right. not be such a great idea. All right, last question. My brother just got out of the hospital after a week on a ventilator. How long until he feels completely well? Is there a chance that he will have long-term problems? Well, probably longer than most people are thinking. Everyone's so happy, of course, when someone gets out of the hospital. And we know that at least six to eight weeks until you've energy back, feeling back to normal. And of course, you know, his doctor is going to be the best guide of that in terms of how serious it was. But as far as the long term lung problems, yes, some people that are severely ill do have long term uh, lung damage, some fibrosis in the lungs. And a lot of that has to do with how they were at the get go. You know, if they had good lung function before they got sick, the smokers, the vapors, other people that had lung problems. So, we're learning as we go along on this one, but if you compare it to other serious respiratory illnesses that end up on ventilators, it is a long process to heal. All right, Dr. Stryker, thanks for joining us. If you have questions, you can go to drstryker.com. Thanks again. Thank you. Hey, Paul.